Hello, uh, I'm Ahmad and now we are going to continue with the uh, compressive element. We solved it earlier with spring coefficient k and we checked the calculation with the global RFM software. And now I'm going to remove those uh, springs and instead of those I want to put uh, rotational springs and we will see how the buckling load will be calculated. So in this example, we are going to use the same element. One, two, three, and four rigid elements. at point A and at point B internally we have point C, D and E and also rotational strings the difference is that uh, this time instead of transitional springs, we are going to use rotational springs. Elements with the length of L. And now we can sketch how it deforms if a force of P is applied at point B. So at point A, we will have the same reaction in the opposite direction and the deformation we can assume how it deforms so as you can see the deformation is more or less the same delta 1 delta 2 and delta 3 Theta 1, Theta 2, Theta 3, and Theta 4. First, we can calculate Delta horizontal at point B as far as the deformation is the same. So delta horizontal B will be as same as what we calculated earlier in the other example. So I will write the equation and then uh, I will write the final simplified answer. Plus L minus L cosinus theta 2 plus L minus L cosinus theta 3 and plus L minus L cosinus theta 4. Theta 3 and 1 minus cosinus theta 4. So if we substitute cosinus theta and uh, the relation with delta 1, 2, and 3, then it will be 1 over L times delta 1 power by 2 plus delta 2 power by 2 plus delta 3 power by 2 minus delta 1 delta 2 minus delta 2 delta 3 so we calculate that this in the first example and also we the energy will be minus p times delta horizontal b minus p over l delta 1 power by 2 delta 2 power by 2 Delta 3 power by 2 minus delta 1 delta 2 minus delta 2 delta 3. And now we are going to calculate the potential energy stored in the 
uh, strings. So as far as we have rotational strings, then the potential energy will be summation of 1 over 2k times theta power by 2. And I assume that all the springs are with the rotational stiffness or rotational coefficient of k. So theta representing in the equation is the absolute deformation. Let's have a look on point C, for example. At point C, the bar in the left is rotating clockwise, theta 1, and the right bar will rotate in the same direction, theta 2. As a result, the relative absolute uh, Rotation will be theta 1 minus theta 2. It doesn't matter which one is subtracted with the other one because uh, it will be powered by 2. So, but for the second one, for the middle one at point D, 1 is rotating clockwise theta 2 and the other one is rotating theta 3. The relative Rotation will be theta 2 plus theta 3. And the same goes for point E, theta 4, and theta 3. As a result, relative theta will be theta 3 minus theta 4. Now I can rewrite the potential energy here. Theta 1 minus theta 2 power by 2. Theta 2 plus theta 3 power by 2. Theta 3 minus theta 4 power by 2. As we remember from first example, theta 1 was delta 1 over L. Theta 2 was delta 2 minus delta 1 over L. Theta 3, delta 2 minus delta 3 divided by L. And theta 4 was delta 3 over L. Now we can substitute these values to W. So W will be 1 over 2K times theta 1 minus theta 2 will be 2 delta 1 minus delta 2 over L power by 2 plus Theta 2 plus theta 3 will be 2 delta 2 minus delta 1 minus delta 3 over L power by 2 plus theta 3 minus theta 4 will be delta 2 minus 2 delta 3 divided by L power by 2. Now we can calculate by hand or we can just go with the MATCAD which might be easier to calculate. So here I will go with uh, these two, just to present how you can calculate. So delta horizontal at point B, it's a function of P and L and delta 1, delta 2 and delta 3. So it's minus P divided by L times delta 1 power by 2 plus delta 2 power by 2 plus delta 3 power by 2 minus delta 1 times delta 2 minus delta 2 times delta 3 and then we can write down that V is a function of okay, delta horizontal is 1 over L and it's not a function of P P and P. 
so it will be minus p times this function. Delta horizontal at point B, and we need to write all the variables. And then W is a function of K and L and Delta one, two, three, one over two times K times Two delta two delta one minus delta two divided by L over by two plus two delta two minus delta one minus delta three divided by L over by 2 plus delta 2 minus 2 delta 3 divided by L over by 2. Just cross check. Now the function of pi is a function of p and other variables and it's going to be w plus v So you can simplify this uh, pi if you want. Perhaps we really don't need, do not need it. But I can put this as the equation in our notes. So to minimize the force of P, we need to take round pi by respect of delta 1 equals to 0, round pi by respect of delta 2 equals to 0, and round pi by respect of delta 3 equals to 0. So let's do it with the MATCAD. You can come to calculus equation, and this is by respect of delta 1, so it is pi function and then so if you want you can write expand you can play to calculate also the other uh, factors something that you have a uh, more a straightforward answer. Here are results for derivatives by respect of delta one, two, and three. Now we can write the matrix.
delta 1 will be 5k over L2 minus 2p over L delta 1 for delta 2 we have minus 4k over L2 plus p over L and for delta 3k over L2 delta 3 equals to 0 for the second one minus 4k over L2 plus p over L Six K over L two minus two P over L and for delta three minus four K over L two plus P over L. And for the last one K over L two delta one minus 4k over L2 plus P over L delta 2 and the last one 5k over L2 minus 2p over L delta 3 or 0 now I can form the coefficient matrix so it will be 5k over L2 minus 2p over L minus 4k over l2 plus p over l and k over l2 minus 4k over l2 plus p over l 6k over l2 minus 2p over l and minus 4k over l2 plus p over l And the variables are delta 1, delta 2, and delta 3. As we can see, a times x should be 0. And to have non-trivial solution, we need to calculate the terminate of the coefficient a and force them to be 0. P e and K and L three by three five K divided by L power by two minus two P divided by L the next one minus four K divided by L power by two plus p divided by l and then k divided l power by 2 so this is also here also here and here this one is here here should be 6 symmetric should be now uh, so here if you see that there is a green box in MATCAD it means that you already assigned something to that or defined it earlier here it is written that the expression re redefines uh, a previously defined function so just just uh, as a hint now we are going to force the terminate of A, B, K, and L should equal to 0 and then we want to solve it by respect of P. So 
So then again, we can see the same answer. So we can substitute k power by 2 l power by 2 power by 0 0.5 a times l and also assume a is greater than zero and l is greater than zero so here are the results for this uh, calculation And as far as we are looking for the minimum value of p, we will go with the minimum one. So p critical one will be 0 0.5858 k over l. p critical two will be 2k over l. And P critical 3 will be 3.414 2K over L. And P, with each one, we can calculate what is the uh, shape mode, like what we did earlier in the other example. I will write down that this is, for example, D as a function of K and L. As you know, it's a function of k and l. Now we have d. And now I want to calculate this by respect of what by this, the, the third value. I want to substitute the third one to this uh, matrix a. So I will write down a. And here I will put instead of p, this one. And then you need to go to matrix and then go with the uh, matrix index. So this is the third one, which is number two. The origin is by default zero. So it's, this is the answer. Here I can put this uh, here, and this is the end of calculation of p critical. Now we can go with p critical one equals to zero point fifty eight fifty eight k over l. Now we are going to calculate the shape modes. This matrix times delta 1, delta 2, delta 3 equals to 0. I will write the first equation 3.8284 k over L2 delta 1 minus 3.4142 k over L2 delta 2 plus k over L2 delta 3 equals to 0. K and L can be simplified and here as far as delta 1 is 1 so it will be minus 3.4142 delta 2 plus delta 3 equals to minus 3.8284 I can use the same for example for the third equation and then it will be minus 3.4142 delta 2 plus 3.8284 delta 3 equals to minus 1. So delta 2 
will be 1.414 and delta 3 will be 1 and we can divide them by the maximum value which is 1.414 so it will be zero point seven oh seven one zero seven oh seven now i can sketch the first mode point a b c d and e so if the middle one goes let's say one these will go to 0 0.7 0 0.707 0.707 so this is for first mode we can do the same for the other modes as well so here we can go with the number zero which is two and also if you want you can just divide this by a and multiply it by l over by two might be much easier again i have three equations equal to zero i have to assume for example delta one equals to one then delta one minus two delta two plus delta three equals zero as a result minus two delta two plus delta three will be minus one and from the last equation minus 2 delta 2 plus delta 3 it's the same i cannot use that one from the second one minus uh, 2 delta 2 minus 2 delta 3 will be 2 so delta 2 will be 0 and delta 3 will be minus 1 the shape mode will be 1 0 minus 1 and i can sketch the illustration of the buckling shape a b c d and e with the rotational springs so point c positive 1, point D 0, and then minus 1 at point E. This will be the second shape mode. And then the third one. We can use float. Minus 1.83 delta 1 minus 0 0.586 delta 2 plus delta 3 equals to 0 and minus 0 0.586 delta 1 minus 828 delta 2 minus 586 delta 3 equals 0 and I assume delta 1 is 1. 
minus 1.416 and this will be 1. We can see that the shape mode will be 1 minus 1.416 so I divide this with 1.416 and then it will be 706 minus 1 706 now I can sketch the shape mode So 0 0.76, 0 0.76, and the other one is 1.416. So it will be this type of shape mode. Now we can go to the numbers. Uh, let's assume K is 2000 kilonewton meter per radian and the length is 2 meters. So the first buckling mode, P critical 1, will be 0 0.5858 K over L and it will be 0 0.5858 times 2000 kilonewton meter per radian divided by 2 meters. So it will be 585.8 kilonewton. Similarly, P critical 2 will be 2K over L and it will be 2000 kilonewton. And P critical 3 will be 4142K over L and it will be 3414 kilonewton. So now P critical 1, 2, and 3 are 585, 2000, and 3400. 14 kilonewton for each mode shape. The thing that should be noted is that uh, we assume that the element is rigid and is connected to the rotational spring every L meters. So when we want to calculate the uh, or model it in RFM. So if these are not stiff enough, the results should not be the same. The reason is that now we are considering the rotational stiffness. It means that uh, a kind of bending or flexural stiffness is also uh, considered in the calculation. For this case, we need to, for example, assume we have a very a strong element. If you model with the rigid element, uh, you would not see any result in RFM because it's uh, rigid and it is not taking the load, it is not shortening. So we can try it together to check how it looks like. So let's let's go for that. Here it is. We have the same material and now let's have one element. As far as I want to have a very rigid one, I will go with the maximum size. For example, 500. every two meters
for point A, it's a hinge connection. At point B, it's a roller. can also change the size of these now if you model this uh, S-spring for the joints like what we did in the previous example you might not see the results that you expected because uh, it's a it's a support but instead we have a S-spring between two elements so for this reason we just go with the hinge at the end of these two members and it was 2000 kilonewton meter so i will put 2000 and for the last one in the beginning and now we have buckling and eigenvalue for 10 modes that is pretty cool and here we can assign minus 1000 kilonewton in the x direction and then we can just calculate the buckling mode uh, and also the buckling force so here we can see that the first buckling shape is the same as what we calculated the second one is also the same and the third one is also the same so if you look at the factors this is 0 0.572 which is which means that it is 572 kN instead of 585 the second one it is 1963 here this is 2000 and the third one is 3366 so the reason is that these elements are not completely uh, rigid. Uh, if you want to model them with a rigid element, you might not see the results since they take the load, but it is not shortened. It means that you do not have deformation. As far as there is no deformation, there is no energy, and then there would not be any uh solution for the for the buckling here you can see that some errors and warning occurred if we go to the error so the model has no actual force uh, as i said uh, it is not happening that way but if you want to see exactly the same result you can increase the size of the section in a way that you have a very very uh a strong element not to be considered as a rigid element for the calculation for example 800 with with uh, 25 millimeter so now it can be assumed to be rigid element compared to uh, the rotational stiffness of the s-ring So here you can see that now we are much more closer. Five eight four one nine nine three three four four four. So you can see that the, here we cannot ignore the lateral steepness of the elements. I, I can uh, put the results that we can see in our notes. Second mode. And the third one. Yes, that's it. And we can also have these values to show the factors.
584.1993 and 3.4 or 3400 and the p applied was 1000 kilonewton yes that is the end of this example i hope you learned how to calculate the buckling load and shape modes thank you for watching this video and uh, let's go to the next example thank you bye